Are you trapped in a cycle of stress and endless worry? Halfway through this video, you'll learn how to break free. Welcome to our animated journey through Nick Trenton's insightful book, Stop Overthinking. If you've ever found yourself stuck in a whirlwind of worry, spiraling into stress without finding a solution, this book is your roadmap to tranquility. Today, we will delve into the intricacies of overthinking, understanding its deep connection with stress and anxiety. We will navigate through various research-based techniques to manage stress effectively and explore transformative strategies to turn your negative thought habits into a powerhouse of positive mental frameworks. Get ready to embark on a transformative journey towards a life driven by action and control leaving behind the shackles of endless worrying. Stay tuned as we unfold actionable insights that will empower you to overcome the labyrinth of negative thought patterns and step into a world of clarity and productivity. Let's start with what overthinking is, why it affects some people, more than others, and how it's connected to stress and anxiety. We're all familiar with the concept of overthinking, but it's often, Misunderstood, overthinking isn't about thinking too much. It's about being stuck in a loop of thoughts that don't lead to any real answers. Overthinking is like getting stuck in your head. Say you have just chosen an apartment but can't. Stop fretting if it was the right choice to the point where it stresses you out all week. This is classic overthinking, where your brain spirals into worry over decisions, big or small. It's like your mind stuck on replay, but instead of helping, it just ramps up your anxiety. Like stressing about a job interview answer doesn't change it. It's the overthinking that's the real problem, not the answer itself. So why do we overthink? Well, it's a mix of our wiring, thanks genetics, and what's happening around us. Some folks are just more prone to anxious thoughts. And then there's our environment, Everything from daily stressors to big life events can push our overthinking into overdrive. Overthinking isn't just a mind thing. It hits your entire well-being. It's like carrying a heavy backpack 24 sevenths. Mentally, it shatters your focus and confidence. Physically, hello, headaches and exhaustion. And socially, it's a roadblock to building strong relationships and can lead us to pull away from others. Ever wonder why we can't handle stress like we used to? In simple terms, our bodies react to stress like we are facing a lion, not a looming deadline. This ancient reaction doesn't really help with modern stresses, leading to all sorts of health. Issues. Chronic stress is like having your stress alarm blaring nonstop. It wears you down, both mentally and physically. It can age us faster mess with our mood big time, and even make us sick. Plus, it drains our mental energy, making us snappy and less chatty. Next, let's explore ways you can manage stress before, during, and after it happens with various research-based techniques. Nick Trenton shows two ways to beat overthinking, handling daily stress better and changing your mindset for the long run. Let's start with stress management. Here's how to handle stress. Before it happens, you can't change your genes or surroundings, but you can choose how you react to stress. Stress is a common part of our daily lives, often making us feel trapped in a relentless routine. The usual advice is to try meditation, but finding time for it can be a challenge with our busy. Schedules. The answer lies in effective time management. Surprisingly, a few tweaks to your daily routine can significantly boost your productivity. Firstly, jot down your daily goals and tasks. Visualizing your day's agenda, perhaps on a calendar or an app, can make your plans more concrete. Secondly, assess the time you allocate to each task. This helps pinpoint where you might be over or under investing your time. Thirdly, schedule regular breaks and anticipate potential hurdles. Skeptical? Often we embark on tasks without a clear strategy. 
This is where the SMART framework comes in handy. It stands for Specific, Measurable, Attainable, Relevant, and Time-Bound. Apply this checklist to your goals. Are they well-defined, measurable, achievable? Do they align with your broader objectives? Can you accomplish them in your set time frame? If you can, answer yes to these, you've got a SMART goal. Implementing this strategy helps streamline your daily activities for better time utilization. If you are still feeling overwhelmed, remember that continuous overexertion can lead to burnout. It's vital to balance work with rest. Allocate time for enjoyable activities and decline those you dislike. Delegating tasks to a few. Trusted individuals and setting clear boundaries can also prevent exhaustion. Ultimately, the goal is to optimize your time by focusing on what matters most to you. Don't just let life happen. Actively shape your schedule to mirror your aspirations. In essence, make every second meaningful. Now, to dealing with stress. When it hits, even with good planning, stress can sneak up on you. When it does, try to manage it constructively. This can mean avoiding stressful situations, changing things up to reduce stress, accepting what you can't change or adjusting your expectations. When quick stress relief is needed, using a variety of relaxation techniques can be more effective than sticking to just one. Try this multi-sensory method for an immediate calming effect. Begin by closing your eyes and taking deep, slow breaths. Focus on a positive, peaceful image that brings you joy, such as a serene beach or a favorite nature trail. Enrich this visualization with other senses. Imagine the sounds, scents, and sensations associated with this place. Spend about five to 10 minutes deeply engaged in this mental retreat. Afterward, envision tucking this calming scene away in your pocket for future use. Gently open your eyes, stretch, out, and breathe deeply. Regular practice can help you quickly relax both your mind and body. To incorporate progressive muscle relaxation, PMR, find a comfortable position and close your eyes again. Begin at your extremities, fingers and toes, and gradually tense and then release, each muscle group moving inward and counting to 10 each time. Finish with deep breaths and a stretch, feeling the relaxation throughout your body. This technique is excellent for enhancing physical awareness, improving sleep, and reducing pain, guiding your mind away from stress and towards tranquility. In the heat of the moment, remember to acknowledge your feelings, think about long-term effects, and look for positive actions. Here's another method the author suggests to reduce your stress. Just like an attic filled with unwanted clutter, our minds sometimes accumulate negative thoughts that don't serve us well. If you are feeling stuck or weighed down by pessimistic mental, chatter, cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, might be just what you need. It's a mental health strategy that increases self-awareness and challenges limiting beliefs, helping with issues like low self-esteem and persistent negative self-talk. Think of it as a mental makeover. CBT teaches us to identify cognitive distortions, those tricky thought patterns that lead us down paths of unhelpful behavior. These include false beliefs, black and white thinking, and the tendency to overgeneralize. We have all been caught in these mental snares, but the good news is that we can learn to manage them. Take control of your thoughts. Start by tracking your negative thoughts in a journal for a few weeks. When you feel overwhelmed by negative emotions, pause and ask yourself, am I considering all sides? Am I jumping to conclusions? Is my reaction a deliberate choice or just a habit? Then write down at least three alternative thoughts. CBT is a powerful way to manage and reframe intrusive emotions by understanding and 
questioning why certain feelings arise and how they impact your mindset, you can develop healthier thought patterns and avoid automatic negative thinking. Now, let me ask you this. Have you ever experienced that overwhelming feeling? The tightness in your chest, endless thoughts racing through your mind. This sensation, known as anxiety, is quite common and can affect anyone often striking suddenly and without warning. The discomfort it brings can be hard to handle, especially since many of us never learn effective coping strategies. While Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, CBT, offers long-term solutions for understanding and addressing anxiety's root causes, sometimes you need an immediate way to handle intense emotions. This is where the 54321 grounding technique comes in, offering a quick and playful distraction to ease stress and anxiety. Here's how to do it. 1. Identify five things you can see around you, like a book, chair, or plant. 2. Acknowledge four things you can physically feel, such as your feet on the floor or the air on your skin. 3. Listen and name three sounds you hear in the environment. It could be anything from the hum of a fridge to distant traffic. Four, recognize two things you can smell, maybe the aroma of your lunch or a scented candle. Five, finally, focus on one thing you can taste, like a piece of fruit or a sip of a drink. This technique helps you reconnect with the present moment, drawing your attention away from overwhelming thoughts and back to your immediate surroundings. By engaging your senses, you can find a sense of calm and bring your focus back to the here and now. And here are the best practices after the stress. Post-stress, reflect on what happened. Writing in a journal helps. Write down your stressful experience, rate your stress, and then shift to finding something positive in it. Be curious about your feelings instead of judging them. Separate yourself from your problems. This helps you see things from a new angle and find solutions. You can use mantras or visualization to detach from negative thoughts. Imagine your worries floating away in a bottle, for example. So the takeaway is managing stress and overthinking is about planning, reacting constructively in the moment, and Reflecting afterward, it's a mix of practical steps and changing your mindset to view challenges differently. Finally, here's how you can reshape your negative thinking habits into positive ones. To beat overthinking long-term, shift your mindset. Ditch those negative thoughts and switch to positive beliefs. Here's how Trenton breaks it down. 1. Spot your triggers and negative thoughts. Notice what sets off your overthinking. Is it a comment, a person, or a situation? Recognize patterns in your thinking that drag you down. Maybe you take things too, personally, or worry about stuff that hasn't even happened. 2. Challenge those negative thoughts. Look at things from a brighter angle. Ask yourself, is my worry based on facts? Try doing the opposite of what your anxiety tells you. If you are scared to join colleagues for the lunch, go anyway. It might just prove your worries wrong. 3. Build positive beliefs. Replace the negative chatter in your head with positive talk. Focus on the now. Don't get hung up on the past or future. Let go of things you can't control. Sign a lease? Stop fretting over it and start planning a cool move-in. Concentrate on your needs not wants. This helps you let go of unnecessary stress. In short, identify what triggers your overthinking, challenge these thoughts, and replace them with positive ones. Live in the moment, worry less about things out of your control, and focus on what truly matters. Unlike other useful book summaries out there stacked with theoretical tips, this video was full of actionable steps so make sure you save it and come back to it whenever you find yourself struggling with overthinking, stress, and anxiety. 
If you found this summary helpful, check out my other video summaries for more life-changing. Books. Hit the notification button and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.